Wisdom. It's an incredibly valuable asset. Some would say more precious than gold. It's attractive, appealing, admirable. Conversely, a lack of wisdom is the basis of immaturity, blind spots, and bad decisions. Wisdom. It can be gained over time, but it can't be rushed. But wisdom can be shared. That's precisely what we are here to do right now. Today, we are here to hack wisdom, to distill it, to understand it, and to process it. Why? To get better at life. Welcome to The Main Thing. This is your new nine-minute podcast. I'm your host, Skip Lineberg, and I've set out to interview the wisest people I know. We'll see what we can learn from each one when they're faced with an incredibly difficult, soul-piercing question. My guest today is Kristen Buckley-White. Kristen has spent 20 years in the entertainment industry working across large global brands such as Nickelodeon, Comedy Central, and TV Land. Her career spans senior executive roles in programming, marketing, and creative leadership. Kristen has always had an entrepreneurial side like many of you. and She left the corporate world to join a startup a few years ago. Even though that startup experience didn't work out, she is grateful for the experience and continues to pursue new business opportunities. Kristen is a wife and the proud mother of two children, Emmett and Phoebe, who light up her world. In her spare time, Kristen can be found baking, entertaining friends, and binge-watching the latest hit show. Over the next nine minutes, you'll discover what unique bit of wisdom Kristen has chosen to share with us today. Kristen, welcome to the Main Thing Podcast. I am so glad to have you on the show today. Thank you so much, Skip. I'm very excited to be here with you and your audience. Yeah. Speaking of our audience, let's help them understand how you and I are connected. Sure. So we have a mutual friend in common who happens to be a super connector, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Judy Robinette. That's right. Judy, uh, who hangs out with the sharks and uh, is an investment <laughs> whiz, is also extremely gifted at connecting people. Case in point, you and I. Yes, she's fantastic. What was it like to help build the Nickelodeon channel and network? That had to be a lot of fun. I'm sure a lot of hard work. Yes, it was amazing. I was at Nickelodeon for almost 19 years. That was such a magical time in my life and in the entertainment business. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to be there for a large portion of growth for the company it's when we launched SpongeBob, a show that maybe some of, of your listeners are Get familiar with. Here. Wow. Yes. And on the preschool front, Dora the Explorer and Blue's Clues. So really being part of those large franchises that people still hold so near and dear to their own childhoods and even for their own children. When I first started at Nickelodeon, we were still, for the most part, the only kids channel in town. So we had a huge audience, huge share, huge ratings, and we had a lot of fun. It was very creative-led, creative-driven, and business was clearly important, but yeah. wasn't the main focus, right? It was really engaging with the audience, wow. entertaining. So through the course of my time there, obviously the business changed. Cartoon Network came in, Disney Channel came in in a much stronger way, YouTube, VOD, gaming platforms. So... Over the course of a couple of years, our audience behaviors really shifted, and it forced us to shift how we looked at the business in a lot of very high-level sure. strategy conversations about what was happening in the industry, what was coming, what we thought was coming, and how we could be in front of some of those changes. Wow, what an experience, and thank you for sharing a glimpse of what that was like. This is a short format podcast. We keep it to nine minutes, so I had better shift gears and ask you the fundamental question that I ask each of my wise guests, Kristen, what is the main thing that you've learned in your lifetime so far? Skip, the main thing I've learned so far is to look forward. Oh, wow. Unpack that for me. I kind of look at looking forward in three large areas. So I think it has business application. Okay. It has career and personal applications mm -hmm. and an attitude and almost, I would say, a spiritual, if you would, implication. Sure. So from a business perspective, clearly it's critical to always be looking forward to trends, competition, and opportunities in your respective business, whether you're an employee, whether you own a business, a large business, a small business, you really need to be ahead 
of the trends and the curves. Oh, and, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And these days I feel like, you know, there really is an overwhelm of data and instant feedback and customers and social media. And it's really easy to get lost in that and lose your forward thinking vision. I think back to your uh, Nickelodeon story, you know, looking ahead, scoping out new opportunities, but also looking and listening for those disruptive forces that might mm -hmm. be swirling around in the uh, competitive environment or in the media space. Absolutely. And I think it also lets you tap into those opportunities in a way that you might not when your you know, head is buried down and you're not keeping your eyes forward, you miss those potential opportunities. Next, I would say would be career okay, and or, you know, your personal life. How I look at it is in a time when companies, especially really large companies, as we know, are less stable from an employment perspective. There's less loyalty in a company um, to the employee. Even if you're an entrepreneur, I feel like it's important to take responsibility for your own success and your own trajectory. And for me, when you're looking forward, you chart a course for yourself. And through that, you're opening yourself up to new experiences to learn, to grow, to evolve, and ultimately skip, you know, possibly even change paths. It might be you come across an opportunity that you never even knew was there. Yeah. So you can't be afraid. And I think, you know, looking forward means letting go of some of that fear and embracing what's ahead of you rather than trying to like to hold on and cling so tightly to what you have. Totally true. And so we have a third context. Uh, Kristen, take us through the higher level spiritual context for looking forward, please. Yes. I like to say that it's really an attitude and a life philosophy. And the way I consider it is really bringing an enthusiastic, positive and expectant energy and attitude mm -hmm. to the activities and people you engage with. So when I think about looking forward, mm -hmm. it's really bringing this energy to what I'm doing and what I'm thinking about. And it's hard. I, I have moments where, you know, I have to really remind myself <laughs> yes. of that. Yes, you know? me too. It's, so do I. I had one, I'll just digress for one second. Please, I had yeah. one actually last night. There was a birthday party planned for a very dear friend of mine. I've been looking forward to going for the last couple of weeks. But this week, I was battling a cold. I had a really busy week at work. Um, and just for a little bit of context, I live in New Jersey, work in Manhattan, and my commute is about 90 minutes each way. Ugh, so it yeah. becomes a really long day. Yeah. So, you know, yesterday, I'm like, oh, party tonight. I'm not feeling great. It's freezing out. I have a really long commute. <laughs> I've been sick. Yeah. All of my thoughts are popping up to say, yeah, you're right. You shouldn't go. So in my head, I'm crafting like, okay, I'm going to have to send a text and say I'm not going. And then in the midst of that skip, I get a reminder text. That's like, you know, Susan's party tonight. I'm oh, sorry, Susan, if you're listening. Um, <laughs> Susan's party tonight. And I had to make the conscious choice in that moment in how I was going to respond. So I responded with looking forward. Uh, Literally said in the text, three exclamations, happy smiley face, looking forward. Because deep down, I really was. I wanted to go out, celebrate her, hang out with some friends, meet some new people. But I was letting all of that other stuff kind of get in the way. How much easier is it to like just come home, put my jammies on and chill out? <laughs> much easier. And that little reminder snapped you out of your, uh, your, your kind of your resistance, negative thinking, didn't it? Exactly. And you know what? I carry that with me on my way home as I was getting ready to go out on my way over, just thinking, I'm looking forward to this. And you know what? It totally changed my attitude. I didn't feel sick anymore. I had such oh, a great cool. time. And I think just that little shift in energy yeah. changed how I went into the night and allowed me to have a really great time and be able to be there and celebrate my friend. It's just cool how all of these wisdom lessons begin to dovetail and to build upon one another. Yeah, absolutely. You're bringing so much great stuff into our lives. Uh, you're too kind. This is a passion project, and it's a joy to do. Kristen, thank you so much for coming on and sharing this with us today. Looking forward, Skip. Wow, nine minutes is up. That goes by incredibly fast, doesn't it? Time flies when you're hacking wisdom.